Hi, if you are getting started with the Couchbase SDK, you are in the right place. Today, I would like to talk about a few things that will help you to extract the most out of the database and also make your experience smoother. Working with Couchbase is very similar to working with relational databases, but with a few extra caveats. In this video, I will highlight some of the things that you should pay attention to, and we will deep dive into some of those topics in the upcoming videos. Let's get started. When you install Couchbase, the web console is also installed by default, and you can access it at the port 891 in your browser. However, the SDK does not use this port to connect to Couchbase. In fact, it might use a number of ports depending on the protocol and services that you are running. The SDK also needs to access all nodes of the cluster. If for some reason you cannot connect successfully, double check if you have the right credentials and try using the Couchbase SDK doctor to check which ports are open in your server. The SDK automatically manages the connection internally, so you don't need to do any type of connection pooling or change the defaults unless you have some corner use case. Just use the same reference throughout your application and you are good. There are also some timeouts for key value operations and Nico. Both of them are aggressive because we expect that the network latency between your application and the database to be minimal. Another reason why we have those timeouts is that at scale, it is preferable to fail fast than leave an application thread waiting for a result from the database for too long, as over time, those blocking threads might accumulate and consume all your application threads and consequently slowing down your throughput. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, no worries, we will talk more about that in the reactive programming and performance improvement videos. For now, all you need to know is that you are fine with the defaults. Some operations on the SDK are lazy, which means that nothing will actually happen until there is a state change or a result is expected. For instance, say you need to insert some data inside a collection. You need to get the reference to the scope, then uh, get a reference to the target collection, and then finally insert the document. If the scope or collection doesn't exist, the SDK will only throw an error during the insert operation. The reason for this is simple. Performance. We saved two trips to the database by doing that as a lazy operation. This is similar to trying to insert a new row in a table that doesn't exist in a relation database. You will only get the error when you execute the insert. Of course, this is just an example, but you will notice scenarios like this all over the place in this SDK. Whenever you execute an operation using the key of the document in the SDK, like an insert, an upsert, update or delete, Couchbase uses under the hood the key value engine. The advantage here is that because of the architecture of the database, you can execute those operations on the sub-millisecond level. If you want to understand why, click on the pop-up banner up there or follow the link in the description. You can also use the key value engine to update and retrieve parts of your document. The sub-document API uses a path syntax to specify attributes and repositions to read or write. This makes it unnecessary to write an equal query or transfer the entire document over the network when you only need to make a small modification. <clears throat> Say you need to remove the free parking attribute and add an alternative email for this hotel. Using the sub-document API, you could do the following. Operations using the KeyVal engine are always strong consistent. So you can read the data after writing it and you will get exactly what you wrote. Nico queries, however, are eventually consistent, which means that you can insert or modify some piece of content. And then if you try to query it right after, you might still get for a few milliseconds the previous version of your data. If you want to make your queries strong consistent, you need to specify the scan consistency as request plus. I know this behavior might feel strange for you at first, but it is in fact a good thing. In many databases, whenever you modify something, you won't receive the acknowledgement back until the database has been persistent and all indexes have been updated. And as you expect, this might take a while. 
as in most scenarios you won't be reading the data that you just wrote anyways, we prefer to update the indexes asynchronously. And if by any chance you need to read the data that you just wrote, you can simply specify request plus. By default, writes in Couchbase are written to our target node and from there, the mutation is sent to any configured replicas. This replication is done memory to memory and this whole process happens in just a few milliseconds. Your application receives the acknowledgement back as soon as the write in the memory of the target node is successful and the server asynchronously replicates and persists the data to the disk. However, if for some reason your server simply explodes just before it has the chance to replicate and persist the data, some information might get lost. You can change that behavior by specifying the durability of your operation. For instance, you can say that you like to ensure that the change is available in the memory of the majority configured replicas by specifying majority. Or the same as before, plus the data persisted to disk on the active node by specifying majority and persist to active. Or that the data must be persisted to the disk on the majority of the replicas by specifying persist to majority. For most scenarios, the default behavior is good enough, but it's up to you as the developer to decide case by case what is the right trade-off. Couchbase supports two types of asset transactions, nickel and key value. The nickel one is very similar to transactions in relational databases, where you specify a start transaction, execute some operations, and then commit at the end while the key value transactions is a special implementation that has no central coordination and no single point of failure, which makes it a better fit when you need to execute transactions at scale. We will deep dive onto this topic in another video, but for now, just bear in mind that you should choose key value transactions over nickel transactions whenever possible. Like most database platforms, using select star can lead to sub-optimized queries. In document databases, you need to pay extra attention to that, as your document size might increase over time, with results in more data being loaded unnecessarily. In Couchbase, we also have a feature called query indexes that help your queries to run even faster. But you can only leverage that if you're not using select star. So, it is recommended to specify in your query exactly the attributes that you need back. It is alright to select everything sometimes. Just remember to avoid that in queries that will be executed hundreds or thousands of times. Your future self will thank you. One thing that you will notice all over the place in Couchbase is that the fastest mode is usually the default. Then it is up to you as the developer to decide when you want to trade performance for something else. In the relational world, some developers like to treat the database like a black box. They just throw data in it and expect that someone else will optimize it later. But when it comes to the distributed and highly scalable databases, a good portion of your performance is decided during the development time. That's why you cannot ignore the database architecture, as some operations are simply cheaper than others. So if you haven't spent some time yet reviewing Couchbase internals, I highly recommend you to do so before going any further. Thanks a lot for staying to the end. See you in the next video.